Hi everyone. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good. Hi. Good. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Wherever morning. it is you're joining us from. Welcome to another monthly webinar from iGaming Africa. Uh, today we'll be talking. Uh, we're talking about an interesting topic, which is about gambling platforms. Our main focus will be on the features of gambling platforms in Africa. Right, and today's uh, today's edition is brought to you by Elabet, one of the premium sportsbook operating in Africa. Um, we are still expecting um, one of the speakers to join in soon, right? But I think we can go ahead from where we are. So I think we should just start off with introductions. Let everybody know who you are. I think I'll start with Ato. Can you just uh, do a brief introduction about yourself? Uh, yeah, I talk, uh, yeah, I will give the first part to Maha, so we can start. Okay, yeah. yes. okay. so Maha Ma is the first first lady speaker. Yeah, on, that's right. Yeah. I came in Africa, so yeah. Ma, please go ahead. Um, thank you. So uh, my name is Maha Otsu. I'm the director for Best Winner Nigeria. I manage the nigerian parts of the bet winner um, franchise i uh, manage every marketing operation and every operation that has to do with the nigerian market executing every strategy to ensure we succeed in nigerian markets awesome awesome so over to you Arthur. yeah uh, nice to meet you ma uh yeah my name is arthur uh i'm the ceo and founder of uh gambling platform uh which is uh <clears throat> bed founders and we are operating in uh east african markets uh i'm so sorry there is something happening behind me <laughs> okay Yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, so sorry. <clears throat> so uh, I represent uh, Bed Founders as a iGaming platform across uh, the African continent. And we are, yes, uh, operating more than uh, six years in this market. So today uh, I'm ready to share my experience and uh, talk about the topics. Yeah, big guys. Uh, nice to meet you, Maha. Nice to meet you, my family. So I wish all the best uh, to our attendants, and uh, yeah, hope uh, everyone will get uh, the best uh, they are waiting for. All right, awesome, awesome. And I'm your moderator for today. My name is Ayafemi Akinlaja. I am the CEO of Sharks Evolution Studios. Uh, we are Africa's first eye gaming studio. We basically develop localized content, games, uh, you know, solutions for the African market. Uh, yeah, so that's that's it. Like I said earlier, today's uh, webinar is brought to you by Elabet, one of Africa's premium sports book. So I think we'll just go right into it. Um, so today we're talking about uh, features of a good gambling platform, right? And since we reside in Africa, we'll be looking at Africa, right? Um, the industry is blooming. There are a lot of new entrants every day, every month, you know, both uh, casino operators to sports book operators, but, uh, you know, a lot of investments coming to the country. And, you know, a lot of people want to know what are the things I need to look for if I'm coming into Africa, right? What, what are my competitors doing? What are the customers looking for, right? What do I, what are the, um, the things I need to know about starting my own sports book, for sports betting or starting my own casino platform, 
right so this is the basis of what we'll be speaking about today so i'll start uh with the first the first question right uh i think i talk and take that one or mahatu can also take it right so what features should the sports book platform have to cater for the preference of the african sports betting enthusiasts right so basically what are the things that we the an average user is looking out for in the sports book platform Right. So if you come into any of the regions, what are the things that you feel should be present in a possible platform that will allow users be able to interact with the website properly and, you know, get what that that feeling that they want to get from it. So, um, Maha, you can you can go ahead. Firstly. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> OK, so when. Um, setting up a sportsbook platform, having a platform. Uh, the first thing is um, whatever platform it is has to be a responsive platform. That is a platform that can be used for in, on any device, whether a laptop, a tablet, or a mobile device. So it has to be a responsive platform. Um, uh, platform and um, it has to be able to accommodate any kind of um, browser it shouldn't be for a specific kind of browser it shouldn't have a platform that uh, you say okay it only works on google chrome it should be able to be compatible with any other kind of uh, browser that the user chooses their preferences to use this um, platform on and when a user is coming to uh, platform what are they looking out for what are you offering to these customers your, your your services what products do you have that can entice these customers first when they come in that's why most of sports books you see your your the odds what odds are you giving is it favorable is it different what makes it different so these are the things that um first catch this um, customers, then how easy is it for them to register on the platform? Um, registration should not be so complicated. If you have various um, ways to register on the platform, it shouldn't be just one way. In case one method of registration fails, they can use another one that can they can easily um, sign into the platform with. Then um, another important thing that uh, players look out for after the register how easy is it for them to make a deposit and how can they also withdraw from this platform it's very important to them because this is money we're talking about and in this part of the world africans nigerians don't play with their money they want to be sure that they can easily make a deposit and easily withdraw from the deposit and the platform should also be able to give a reasonable amount for minimum deposit it shouldn't be so um high it should be something every you know that caters to every class um of um, people within the the region so people can easily make deposits with the little they have and can withdraw to should be a reasonable minimum amount for withdrawal they can get their money out easily so um these are just the basic things that uh, platform providers sports, sports books operators should put into consideration when setting up a platform and trying to gain entry into the african market uh, every platform should have a light version where uh, people who have a kind of smaller phone can have access to the platform as well so it is not restricted to people using some high-end um, phones. So, because we have more people in this region who have just, you know, the small compact compatible phones, so they should be able to access this platform, and um, as well. So uh, everyone has the, the the platform is easily accessible to, you know, everybody. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, at all, uh, so I'll spin this question a little bit, right? Still on on what you're speaking about, right? We've seen, um, you know, when people come into the industry, we have different platform providers. And do you, do, are you of the opinion that uh, for every market, there is a particular way your platform needs to look, because there's a, there's um, there's a concept where uh, the players are obsessed with a particular look of maybe a popular sports book. 
or a popular casino platform. What do you think about that? Yeah, so uh, let me uh, resume uh, my speech. Yeah, uh, we had a uh, lot of points Maha mentioned and everything is uh, clear and everything, every point is so important for African market. I will try to come uh, from the main points uh, from my uh, researches and my experience. Actually, yeah, we are speaking about uh, African market uh, and I want to announce that African market is pretty big and it is not like one word, this is Africa. There is about uh, a billion customers base uh, and we have uh, many, many countries that they require specific uh, approach to each uh, market and I will start from the main point uh, I've got from my experience uh, the very beginning is uh, the trust and respect of each customer each client who wants to play on the platform so in this uh, what does it mean um, actually yes you have to check the market, you have to analyze well, you have to see uh, how the market is performing, how the market is growing, because there are a lot of uh, ways that uh, each uh, country can go on, uh, depends on the competition, depends on uh, what they have at this moment, what is the situation, because we have countries that uh, till now, USSD betting is uh, pretty popular and we have many, many countries and markets that uh, they require strong and, let's say, up-to-date uh, platform. Uh, and what I mean to respect players and uh, work on the trust of the platform, yes, it is about uh, to uh, take uh, on attention each point uh, you got from the initial players, let's say, from the competitors and so on, and take on action and uh, try to uh, serve is it uh, as uh, as they will like they will want to play and to move on uh surely uh, at this moment uh, all industry is uh, turning uh, into africa and i'm uh, more than 6 years uh, working on this platform uh, on this continent, sorry, uh, and uh, I've got a lot of experiences, uh, let's say failures and success and uh, so on. Uh, so what are the main points for a good gambling platform in Africa? I will try to answer that uh, surely it's going to be light. Uh, it has to require low data. Uh, to uh, operate fast, uh, to work on uh, easy registration, uh, then easy explanation, and after that, easy deposit and withdraw. So the most important thing is withdrawal process, which, uh, where we, we have we put uh, our main attention because uh, many, many companies, they keep uh, withdrawal processes uh, on delay, let's to check, uh, to move on, and so on. And uh, the second uh, most important thing is uh, for me that Maha uh, is, uh, didn't mention uh, is about uh, wagering. Yes, markets, I don't know, uh, games, content, everything is pretty important, but uh, there are main points, for example, wagering. Uh, in all the world, in, uh, I don't know, Asia, in Europe, uh, everywhere, there is a strong wagering system which we have reduced and at this moment we are providing platform when there is no wagering. And as African market is rapidly growing and uh, we have uh, players started from USSD betting up to mobile app for Android and iOS, um, we have to pay attention on this that it is pretty, pretty difficult for, for the market to go on this wagering, let's say 10 times, I don't know, 30 times and so on. Yes, surely it is done for bonus hunters. It is done that to keep uh, uh, the industry clear, but there is a lot of ways you can escape and you can uh, serve users very simple solutions. You can keep all bonuses, you can keep all promotions, but uh, you can reduce the badgering uh, experience, which comes from, let's say from Europe, let's three, 30 times. It's like nonsense for African market. 
and surely um, the most important thing is uh, to reduce a lot of information came from the world let's say email no uh, kyc i don't know verification models and so on because uh, the market is growing yeah we have uh, we have i don't know we have started from nothing there are nothing to know your client to understand who are the players and nowadays uh, this is very good moment for african market to implement new technologies let's say because it is visible and um, everyone can can have solutions from tech side that's what we are doing uh we are not coming on traditional model from traditional experiences we are trying to solve uh, all situations uh, by tech and uh, we are not uh, trying to put all let's say our uh, negative experience or hard parts to user side we are trying to escape from this this is the most important thing started from registration let's say we we just need phone number we we don't need any verification code nothing later on we provide let's say uh, to verify phone number in order to make uh, uh, verified this user and later on just one simple step you can make deposit and then a uh, very small step you can make withdrawal so this is what uh, african let's say uh, market likes and uh, i see that trends Surely, uh, I combine with uh, all all my uh, points. I combine with Mahat, so uh, we, we have different. Let's say we have different uh, approaches and points as well. So uh, our uh, attendance can can get uh, one from my side and then from Mahat. Side. Yeah, I think thanks for the question. That's it. If you have any questions regarding my speech, yeah, we can move on. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So let's 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 talk about um, accessibility and you know internet connection, right? Uh, we know the the uh, data connection speed in certain parts of Africa. In fact, majority parts of Africa, except the the top tier countries like uh, Nigeria, Kenya, South Africa. You know, every other place doesn't have as good internet right people depend on low-end phones so how do you think uh, a a gambling a sports book platform right should adapt all of this into what it is they are coming to do in africa right so accessibility devices internet speed connection we have seen in uh, east africa there's something very popular right let me touch on that uh, it's called um, opera mini extreme mode right which it's kind of i mean when i heard about it the first time when i went to kenya it was quite amazing that people actually you know use something like that so what it does is it shrinks all the images on like on the website if there are too many images there are certain things it just cuts off to just display normal text right so how do how do people adapt all of this and you know coming into africa whatever region it is that you want to go into how do you adapt all this to make sure that you're a success I think uh, Maha can, can take that first. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think um, when it comes to accessibility, one country, Kenya, has that because they have the option for SMS betting as well. Another thing is um, providers and operators need to consider and have in mind is um, having an offline mode where people can have access to placing bets or have access to the platform when they are not, they do not have um, data at the time. And um, because even in Nigeria, we still struggle with network issues. And there are some certain places you would go to where your network provider is not really, uh, the, the, their, their internet is not so strong. And when you are in a place like that, you should still have access to the platform, have access to an offline version of the platform. This is quite possible because, you know, I have met uh, some tech guys who had that solutions as well. So to create an offline version of the website and integrate with the main version. So when players are offline, are offline, they still have access to place bets on the platform, but what they would be informed they would know that this odds they are saying was based on the last time they were online so odds would change when they come back online so we should have this kind of innovation 
across you know africa to make it easy for people to have access to the platform and also the um the idea of the option of placing bet through sms is also a good way of making it accessible for people to make um to make use of the platform even without um, having data or even without having you know some high-end um, phones as well and um making having uh, offline deposit options and this is why you know this part of the country uh, retail betting is still really really thriving because it gives people the opportunity to still have a, use the platform have an interaction with this platform even if they don't have a phone they can walk into any any shop to still make use of the platform place their bets and have withdraw their money so we need to consider that for online platforms as well how do we serve these people who are not who who are not um who are not really who who um are, are kind of having challenges with data having an offline platform would help solve you know uh, a huge percentage of this problem Oh, do you have do you have what do you think about that internet connectivity accessibility devices uh you know across the different regions you know yes what do you think yeah yeah as as uh, as i mentioned before uh that uh, i'm not coming from one brand and uh, one company in uh, let's say one country yeah I will, I will again i will try to speak about abroad um uh, and surely accessibility is the most important thing uh, as well and uh, we can start from uh, the low connectivity and the uh, internet data problems so from one one side it is like a pain for a lot of companies for many competitors or uh, let's say uh, companies who who are who is operating in a uh, particular market but from from other side it's, it can be a benefit for uh, companies who wants to start from over who wants to interest it in um, a new market and who want to uh, face with the challenges and solve the problem so uh, yes uh, we have many countries that they have good internet or better internet and then there are uh, regions and places where uh, there is total uh, mess let's say of uh, internet connectivity even slow or no internet so at this moment we are working on uh, on the platform where we can try to have uh, let's say offline mode for uh, especially for games and for uh, casinos slots uh, and so on. Yeah, this is this is uh, the biggest part of African market uh, where if you can uh, have solution for let's say no internet connectivity target then uh, here you are you have uh, many many customers and many players who are waiting for some event or some action to play on it then the second part is about low internet connectivity where um, where we can uh, actually where we can uh, try to get uh, to require less internet it is the most important part because uh, lower or uh, less connectivity doesn't mean that there is no internet so you have uh, you have to provide service that uh, can work with lower internet connectivity and one of the best solutions is a uh, mobile app uh, especially for android uh, devices it's very easy to uh, download an apk and then install a mobile uh, phone well, so this there is big difference between website and uh, apk so once uh, users have strong internet or good internet they can immediately download a mobile app then app uh, includes all images medias data uh, and then after downloading the application uh, uses uh, storage data let's say and uh, it doesn't require st strong internet but uh, having mobile application is not let's say mandatory it is not the solution it is not the best thing you have to pay attention if you have application does it solve uh, low internet connectivity uh, does it work on low internet uh, mode let's say and uh, surely uh, it is like a technical part that you have to pay attention on this 
uh, in order to keep all the storage or everything uh, required from internet, you can uh, keep on mobile phone, then users can get easily. Also, uh, from um, low internet connectivity, uh, always uh, we are having a lot of problems, let's say bad, win, or people are trying to, uh, especially on sports book, uh, on live games, you have to, I don't know, to uh, make a bet or to uh, in a second. And it is, yeah, terrible. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, many, many companies, they provide uh, the same version of the platform that works on Europe or I don't know, some other places where the internet is very good. So uh, uh, what I recommend to all companies, all, uh, let's say, uh, market players that put attention on uh, internet connectivity uh, and uh, just it is not a term, it is not a word. It is a real job you have to do and you have to uh, check if you have a uh, version of low connectivity and you have for strong connectivity and also about the SMS betting, which doesn't require uh, any internet. So this is the most important uh, part uh, to keep on your mind. And surely you have to implement this in the market. You have to uh, take uh, feedback from the customers that yes, on low connectivity, your platform supports and uh, users and players, everyone can get easily access to your platform when they don't have internet or they have low internet connectivity. And uh, nowadays uh, we have met with a lot of uh, cases that big companies come, they, they say light version, I don't know, low connection, but it actually doesn't work. So what I offer them to check uh, better, to try to understand the market needs because it is pretty, pretty hard. You can put a lot of uh, on your marketing, uh, gaining players, and then due to this issue, you can, I don't know, fail, let's say. And also from players, like, it's like a negative experience. And the next company or the other one who, who provides this, again, they mention light fashion. So you you just uh, make it uh, users, you know, like misunderstanding. They don't know what does it mean. So uh, we have to be simple and we have to be clear. If you provide, if you provide low internet connectivity, uh, and uh, we provide application that it solves the problem of users, then that's why uh, only that's the that time that let's announce about it and let's speak that we will provide surely low internet connectivity. Surely uh, speed, uh, I don't know, application, web version, mobile version, SMS version, USSD betting, Opera Mini, there is a lot of opportunities you have to take in action. As Maha mentioned, uh, it doesn't mean that if your platform works on Google Chrome in your office on the internet, then yeah, you're good. You can move on. Yeah, there are a lot of a lot of challenges you have to face with uh, started from uh, the diversity of browsers, browsers uh, up to mobile app, and you have to put attention on all your points. Okay. Not taking your time more if you have yeah, if I miss okay. something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, I also want to add that um, to also make it uh, the plat platforms accessible, you know, operators can partner with local telecoms, you know, providers to provide services to their customers using that particular brand for their network to have access to the platform, even when they don't have data. That can also be a unique selling point for, you know, operators as well. So when they partner, they make a certain deposit for mobile data and customers who use for example mtn or airtel or whatever mobile data they use they have access to the platform when they are without data so that can also help you know solve you know the whole accessibility problem to an extent well, i think I'll, I'll just add that um you know whatever region it is that you want to play in it's very important that uh you understand what the customers want or what they are using and if you're able to penetrate the market i mean if you're in nigeria if you're coming to nigeria yeah data data yeah it's not so expensive yeah you can still connect right but if you're going to places like east africa kenya tanzania uganda rwanda right you would probably need to consider using uh, a very light mode for your platform right because people should be able to access it more. A lot of people are already used to um, light mobile, opera, um, you know, opera mini extreme mode. So you want to get into the market, get into the mix 
and play on from there. So uh, we have uh, our, our third speaker has joined, uh, Renny Maimo. Hi, Renny. Late. I had issues with connectivity and stuff, so all is well that ends well. Happy to join the conversation. A great one, great conversation, and uh, I'm amazed with uh, the rich ideas that already have been uh, chipped through. I'm sure um, our audience are having a great time. I wanted to chip in a little contribution regarding um, USSD, which is actually uh, a channel that most uh, sportsbook operators don't um, maximize. I will explain why. Now, the issue of internet has remained um, a preoccupation to most operators and investors in that sector, and all ideas about how to uh, reduce um size of images to make sure that loading is uh, easy to maximize available internet connectivity they are all good ideas but you see ussd is that channel you would want to think about for your sports uh for your sports book especially uh, sports betting and, and lottery it's true that you can't have so many markets and so many events on ussd but by combining the, the online and USSD, whereby your punters can actually generate a code online and have it validated on USSD and then push their, 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 their bets across can be a great way to you know, go around the challenges around connectivity. And for lottery, I would think it's very easy to roll out a lottery on USSD. So that's a channel that I encourage investors and sportsbook operators to, to consider in, you know, you know, in, in um, optimizing the investment where internet connectivity is low, uh, exploit USSD. SMS betting, as Aro rightly said, a great idea. I mean, Aro, you've got a rich experience in this business and I admire your, your, your experience. You've um, contributed richly on SMS betting, and you did mention USSD betting. So I think the, the take home message here is that uh, investors and operators should also give the chance to rule out USSD betting because another advantage is that you, you tend to reach those markets where people may want to bet, but <laughs> there is no just internet connection. I'm talking of those remote areas, out of the city areas, in villages where people can actually want to be part of the fun, enjoy the entertainment of betting. But the fact that internet connection is either poor or not available in that part of the market uh, kicks you out. You, 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 kicks you out. You see what I'm saying? But if you come with USSD, you will be able to get almost everybody. I'm sure in remote villages in Africa today, people have uh, non-Android phone, I mean, non-smartphone. So they too can be part of the gaming uh, fund and you make money. So you reach many uh, inaccessible areas where internet is not available and, you know, you, you make money from there. Excellent, excellent addition. Thank you very much, Rene. Um, you've, you've spoken well to reiterate on USSD, right? I completely agree with you. And I think it's something, um, you know, new entrants, current operators should, you know, bear in mind to reach the uh, the majority of the market, right? Uh, yeah, so this is still um, iGaming Africa. We're talking about features of a good gambling platform. Um, today's edition is brought to you by Ella Bet, one of the premium sports book operators in Africa. They are across uh, a lot of countries, so I think you should check them out based on your region. Uh, so uh, my next question will be around games and be around casino games and would be around uh, betting options, right? So now we have sports betting on one side and we have casino on one side. Now, casino is picking up. Everybody's talking about crash games. You know, every operator is trying to hard casino. What are the kind of casino games we should be looking at or considering, right? And then on the bet on the sports betting side, now you have an event that has probably like 120 betting options or 140 betting options. Some even have as high as 200 different betting options. What do you think will be um, the most attractive that, you know, operators or, you know, new entrants should consider, right? Same, likewise with the games. What do you think should be uh, your your forefront, you know? I'll start with Yato because he also has, yeah, is into casino. So, Ato, tell me what you feel. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, uh, 
uh, I'm totally agree that uh, we have to provide a variety of uh, sports events, uh, casino games, uh, and so on. So what I decided three years before uh, operating and working in African market, I've decided to completely separate uh, online casino and sports betting uh, from each other, let's say because it is pretty hard uh, in this market, in this growing market where uh, things come from sim simple uh, and uh, goes to uh, very, very fast, uh, we have decided to separate everything. So I will speak about uh, casino, which we have uh, separated, and I will give uh, most part of sports betting uh, to my colleagues uh, who is going to speak next. Uh, yeah, and we decided to separate casino games in order to provide uh yeah the the best the best uh experience and um nowadays uh, the trends are trends are going to uh crash games yes all africa is covered by crash games everyone is trying to uh, provide the best games they can provide uh, in our por portfolio we have more than 25 uh types of crash games uh and uh, the next next step is low data uh slot games uh and surely we have everyone has to include new games and new chances uh to give new chances to players so that means that the games they are not famous they are not popular you have to bring them in action you have to promote them you have to take uh to educate users like how to play what does it mean uh, what does it mean this pin this slot uh, or i don't know live roulette live games and uh, surely uh, you have to uh, you have to take an action on each category in uh, casino. So the trends are going into crash games, as you mentioned. But I totally agree that we have to put attention on uh, diversity. So uh, I think that's it from my side. Uh, and nowadays it's it's uh, it's uh, available for everyone that that uh, without crash games, you cannot work in casino industry. It is, I don't know if it's happy or uh, sad, but this is the true in African market. So uh, once you want to enter this market, uh, you have to uh, provide crash games as you can. All right, awesome. Um, Maha, do you want to speak on sports betting? Um... Um, yeah, when it comes to, you know, sports betting, you know, that's the popular um, product that is the major selling point for most of the operators. But um, now uh, customers are accommodative to casino and crash games. And I feel when it comes to crash games, you know, um, providers as well have to partner with, you know, local providers like yourself, Shaq to make games that that actually meets the needs of this market most providers the the mistake most do is just bring in same content they have for the european market and bring it for the african market and just expect everything to go well but when we have some localized content some games that are specific games that people we all grew up like are familiar with already. It's not so difficult to actually identify with that kind of game or try it out on a platform. Uh, when it comes to casino, we still have a lot of work to do to sensitize people, to um, make people understand the games and how to play it because uh, it's growing. Casino is really growing. Online casino is really growing in this part of um, the world, but we still have a lot to do when it comes to sensitization and trying to educate people on how to use the casino platform, live casino, and understand the rules and games. And I think um, on our platform, there should be features, uh, even graphical features on how to explain uh, uh, the usage or playing of these games on our platforms. Um, for sports betting, there are just various um, options to choose from. I think uh, for now, sports betting, we're doing well when it comes to features and um, offerings for sports betting. It's just really, really vast and really uh, uh, player sponsors have a lot to choose from from um, sports betting. The key thing we see when it 
when we open a platform is first uh, the odds for the games, then who to win, um, then choosing. So it's just a really, really uh, robust option for sports betting. And um, players have come to understand these options and have come to be comfortable with these options. So how do we transfer this to, you know, online casino? So that's what we should be looking at and trying to sensitize people on that. Some stuff. Awesome. Uh, so I think, um, Maha, based on what you said now, right, let me ask you another question, right, just to chip off from what you said. Uh, you talked about uh, casino having a lot of work to do. And, you know, now we're having like uh, casino only companies, right? We have uh, a lot of them now from Kenya to Nigeria. It's becoming very popular in Africa, right? Do you think casino only platforms can rival sports betting platforms? Or do you think this is entirely dead on, our, on arrival? I have that question too, also for you, Renny. So do you think it's, they can rival or is dead on arrival or you think we still have a lot of more work to do before casino only platforms can rival sports betting and when i mean rival i don't mean unhealthy rival but i mean like yeah know, i understand yeah so i wouldn't say dead on arrival because i don't have statistics or data or any research to prove that okay. because this market the market can be very shocking some things you don't think would sell would actually sell if you don't try it so once people understand how to use they just need to understand it once they understand it i don't see why a company cannot thrive with just casino you know so it's just the process of educating these people, the process of making people understand, you know, because like, for example, in Nigeria, now we don't have a lot of, I'm not so familiar with, you know, land-based casinos as, and even the ones available are like restrictive. So online casino gives people the option, the, 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 the makes people aware, you know, of casino and people can, you know, out of curiosity, would want to play around it to understand what the whole concept is, what are the rules to casino. And if there is proper education and a proper education on how to use these tools, how to understand the live casino, how they can place bets, how they can win money, I think casino has a potential, you know, in coming future. The, 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 the industry is really green and there is room for diversity and there is room for people to there's sports betting everywhere so casino running an online casino makes you know what, that operator difference or uh kind of not in a really it's not so so competitive yet so there can be room for for success there can be room for huge success where we might be looking at uh trying to imitate them in the nearest future so we can't just say it is dead on arrival let's see how it goes and let's create more awareness for online casino and um, make players understand how to use this platform okay um if i may chip in if i may yeah. chip in um <clears throat> i I beg to be corrected if I'm wrong. I consider online casino as a niche gaming offer because it doesn't target the mass market in the sense that a biker on the street would not opt to play casino uh, and leave sportsbook. So casino, I think, addresses the needs of a specific um, category of punters, a specific category of, 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 of people who bet online. And I would say we are not yet in an era where uh, casino can come on board as a threat to sportsbook. Sportsbook remains a giant offer in the African market. And maybe there are potentials for online casino. We are not yet at the era where sportsbook operators could feel casino can take over their market. Now, it, as I said, it's a niche offer for, for online uh, punters because people who bet on casino go online specifically to bet on casino. And maybe on rare occasions will they bet on sportsbook offer and it's vice versa. Sportsbook punters, mm, sorry, sports betting guys, they would rarely 
go for casino offers online, which doesn't mean casino doesn't have its market. It has its market, but it's still far from rivaling uh, sports betting. That's just uh, my opinion. And as I said, okay. I beg to be corrected if I'm wrong. Okay. Awesome. Um, at all, so I will spin this a little, right? Just a little bit, right? Yeah. So for a good casino-only platform, in one minute, just tell us what are the things you should have? Yeah, that's what we, we have started. Actually, they are for us, they are completely different products. And we respect uh, sports betting operators and players as well. But we have found that there is even it was smaller, but there is a target. There are players who want to play only casino. So they need to pay attention as well. And it is completely different behavior of the users that someone who wants to play on casino on crash games, they don't want to face with your, I don't know, uh, Real Madrid or Barcelona matches and the, mm -hmm. all the market and so on. So I respect everyone. Yes, uh, Sportsbook takes a majority, let's say. It's like huge uh, target, in especially in African market. But uh, we respect all casino players. That's why we made it different. And uh, we have tried to uh, serve, to provide solution for the people who want to play only, let's say, crash game or a specific slot. So they don't pass through all your sports, bad things, uh, stuff, marketing, promotions, and so on. And one more thing. The last thing is that uh, we have tried to figure out that <clears throat> you cannot combine all features and bonuses into one place for sportsbook and for casino as well so that's why different uh, they are not rival they are just different target and different market like i don't know chemistry and i don't know geography so they are different they are uh, you you start uh, you study in school but they are different so casino online casino and sports betting i have decided to make it separate because i love the segment players who want to play only casino there and i respect them very well okay awesome awesome i think uh casino is wanting to watch out for um there are a lot of numbers that are currently like going on across board so if you're if you're if you want to go into sports betting good and fine if you want to go into casino good and fine so far you are very persistent when it comes to the casino because it's very mm -hmm. very still very new right the market is still growing on like sports betting so i mean with a little persistence with the right promotions with the right strategy you'll be able to get at least the casino users casino users account for about 10 percent of the total gambling so you can do your maths with that so we'll move into, into the next question and uh, we'll be talking about payment systems here right uh what are the the uh the diversified payment system you think everybody should have right um maha with between i know you guys have like various um betting um, various payment systems where people can actually pay with because we've actually know, um, found out that uh in some cases some people prefer a particular payment method right to another right so on that on that front what were you saying like what would you say about that having uh different payment methods just briefly okay so the amazing thing about payments is africa is really growing with a lot of fintech companies offering various services so payments payments options are like we have it's we, we have various payment options so users should be able to make deposits with any payments option they wish to or method they wish to using bank cards using transfer using ussd which would cater to offline payments and um, making use of wallet as well wallet payment option is actually growing because we have various fintech companies with their mobile apps and users make use of those um, apps on a daily basis make deposits have funds there so they want to easily make deposits using the funds in their wallet so we should have that integration on the platforms as well making payments using their wallets either going directly on the on the wallet to make deposits or coming to the platform the website to make deposits um, linking it back to their their wallet and making withdrawal through that same process so payments it's is something that is really really you know vast here and we have several options to make deposits with um where crypto is allowed yes crypto deposits and withdrawal to if possible um, can be used as well so 
um, just as being specific with certain you know platform they use when you weigh the options and see um, the demand if it is uh, a lot of users are making demands for that platform and you see maybe the platform is uh, a, a huge platform as well you can integrate that into your system too and um, ensure uh, users are getting the most when it comes to payment options awesome awesome i think to, uh, to add to that right um speaking on you know mobile money when it comes to um, east africa i mean the regions where you want to play or where you want to operate in really matters, right? Understanding what works in the region. For example, mobile money works in East Africa. It doesn't work in West Africa. West Africa players are used to bank transfer, card payments, you know. We don't really do like in PESA or Momo here, right? But in East Africa, I mean, if, you're not, if you don't have mobile money first as one of your first systems, then you're not ready, right? So those are the things you need to consider, right? So do your research, understand the payments. Always have more than one payment. Uh, gateway it really helps you right so it's more comfortable for um whoever your player is to access and you know make payments into your website to play uh so we'll move on to the next question on affiliate marketing uh Rene, this question will be for you right all right yeah how, how important is it to have um you know to integrate affiliate platforms affiliate marketing platforms to your to your website as an operator and you know affiliate is kind of like here and there there's not you know the the whole market is not entirely convinced about it but i feel like it's a good way so i want you to can you just like tell us a bit more on affiliate marketing what are the strategies what do you think are the key points what should the operators look out for when you know partnering with an affiliate marketing platform right and before you sorry before you take that question please um audience you can start asking your questions we'll take just a couple questions due to time please ask your questions you can just drop a comment on whatever you're watching from and we'll be sure to take it thank you very much yeah Rennie, you can go ahead okay uh i'll start by saying that um uh, sportsbook operators have understood the need and importance to tap into the network of uh some individuals who seem to be crowd pullers. So I will make my contribution with offline affiliate uh, marketing strategies and online affiliate marketing strategies. I started with the offline affiliate strategy whereby investors think that crowd pullers could be, in fact, they don't think it's a reality that crowd pullers, lovers of, of sports, uh, like football stars or some artists, they can tap into their network and get their own clients out of there because the belief is that when they use some individuals, it gives credibility to their brand. And of course, through that, they can, you know, their followers can be their clients automatically. So it's a great idea. I mean, most uh, operators have successfully uh, tapped into this offline affiliate marketing strategy by using individuals, brand ambassadors, and all of that to, to make money. And it's working so well. It's the way forward. There is never going to be a time that, uh, well, let me not just be too sure because I'm, I don't know what the future holds. I want to assume that this trend is going to continue for a very long time where crowd pullers will be, we will attract interest from investors in the sports specs sector and anywhere else. Um, now, talking about online affiliate marketing. Now, it's the same concept. You know, you want to tap into the footfalls of some sites that, pull crowds and by so doing you're sharing the online space with with with, with whatever um uh, side you decide to tap into i think it's also the way forward because it's all about creating successful partnership i compliment you you compliment me you have something i need i have something you need you come on board and we join hands and see how i can tap into what you have and you benefit something from what i have so google ads and pop ups and uh, slides and all those uh strategies you can think about they are the way forward in affiliate marketing. It's imperative for whoever wants to invest in digital marketing to consider that because if you have an online platform without investing in digital marketing efforts, you're missing out on something. And affiliate uh, online marketing is just one of those things that you will need to optimize your presence online and make money. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, you've well articulated uh, the, you've well articulated, I mean, everything you need to know about affiliate right um they have different affiliate uh, marketing platforms at the moment right mm -hmm. uh you should be sure to make your research understand the commitments the rates how you intend to work 
the marketing strategies i think another imp important thing to consider is influencer marketing right affiliates can it can be quite separate from influencer mar marketing sometimes okay. uh, we've seen influencer marketing work very well so i think it should be something to consider so we'll jump into questions at this point because of time thank you so much for um joining us at this point uh i think while we are about to take a question there's already a question on the screen uh, i think i'll just make a wordy mention of some of the good you know gambling platforms in africa that you can you know check out to see we have ella bet we have uh bet ninja hollywood bet spotty bet bet winner 22 bet there's like a lot of them od bet across the different regions right there are some particular sports operators sports betting operators that you know you should always want to look out to to see what it is they're actually doing right so the question is uh how do betting platforms you know think about customer retention considering the competition in the market very very interesting question very Atom, would you like to take that yes uh thanks for the question i think it comes from lucius uh, avina and uh, thanks for the question Yes, uh, the retention is the second most important part of gambling platforms uh, after acquisition. Let's say when users come to play once uh, or the first time. So retention part is the, is the most important thing. Um, everyone has to uh, make decision how to move on with retention. But uh, from my experience, I can tell that uh, it is not about disturbing the players. So you have to figure out a lot of uh, features that they will make players to come back and play. It is about tournaments, uh, daily free tools, I don't know, rewards and so on, but it is not about uh, disturbing users. So I will prefer and I will offer everyone just uh, to think about players and uh, using uh, all retention tools uh, they are available uh, in the market uh you you just need to serve the users and they have to decide whichever to take there are a lot of uh, tools so just just uh, uh just be on uh ten trends and see what you can offer uh but not uh with your retention tools try not to disturb users because everyone is sending sms they are trying to uh, do bulk SMSs. They are sending a lot of SMSs, but it is not about uh, re retention. It's about bonuses, about the features, which will be calculated in, uh, let's say, turnover in UGR uh, for the whole company. And then you have to give as a return to player, let's say, uh, in the form of bonus and uh, in the form of different features on the platform. So this is the more important thing that uh, we have to pay attention on this. Thanks for the question. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so we we about to close the curtain on um, on this, but I, I think there's a question from uh, Raja Saka. He says, uh, "What methods have been used to mitigate bonus abuse? Uh, what methods have been used to mitigate bonus abuse?" I think um, I'll just talk briefly on this. Um, I think one thing that is very important about bonus abuse is being able to track the particular user right bonus abuse comes from a user opening multiple accounts just to benefit from that bonus right if you're able to track the pipeline of that particular user right and limit the number of accounts a user can actually create i think it comes from first of all uh, if it's a if you're verifying emails by phone number if you're verifying an account by phone number or emails that can also help right it's i mean in some parts of africa it's impossible for you to have more than one number at a time, like having talk less of having multiple numbers to be able to abuse the bonus, right? And uh, also there are other things such as, you know, setting strategies, looking at your flow of the bonus, right? I think it's very important that you consider bonus abuse before running any promotion, be it a spinning wheel, be spin offer, be it a welcome bonus. You see everybody that runs welcome bonus now, they put in a wager requirement and those are like, things to curtail bonus abuse, right? So in your decision of the kind of bonus promotion jackpots that you intend to do, make sure that you consider bonus abuse in the line of what you are trying to develop. So at this point, we are going to call it a day, but first of all, I think I'll take closing remarks from every speaker, I'll just briefly talk in just a minute on, you know, the whole thing we've talked about today, what would you like to chip in additionally that we've not been able to cover just a couple lines and then 
we call it a day. Yeah, so well, I thought I may... start. Can you take it? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Bernie. Go ahead. Well, I was saying, if I may um, <clears throat> chip in my last uh, remarks, I from um, the client, um, sorry, from the participant uh, inquiring uh, about um, managing customer loyalty and customer retention. There is a tool which we call customer categorization that enables you to categorize your clients into three, new clients, regular uh, winners, and regular losers. And it can actually help you to generate data. And with this data, you can actually optimize your marketing efforts by sending SMSs to each category of client knowing what exactly to tell him or her. Because if you have people who lose a lot, you prefer your marketing campaign, specific SMSs you send to them, encouraging them now with uh, with, 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 with those free bets that you mentioned, Artu. So you'll be doing well-targeted marketing. You'll be sending uh, free bonuses to those you know they really need. And um, it, it's a rich uh, you know, tool that uh, sportsbook operators need to leverage on in order to uh, increase their customer retention capabilities. And I think the take-home message from my part is that there is a lot that the African gaming market still has to offer investors, and uh, no channel is saturated. But some channels, like the USSD, are just under you, are under just under explored. And I encourage them to, um, you know, consider that as one of the channels they can uh, invest in and optimize their investment. on. I think that would be my sign-out point. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Arthur, do you want to take that? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I would like to uh, sum up everything. And uh, thanks for organizers. Thanks for everyone who joined us. Thanks, Maha. Uh, thanks, Rene. And they also, uh, iGaming Africa and uh, surely our sponsor, uh, Helabet, uh, for supporting this webinar and one one more point i would like to mention because we speak a lot and uh, we have a lot actually we have i have a lot to speak and to tell uh, to our attendants and uh, i will take a look at all the uh, comments and uh, everything came from attendance and uh, to be honest i would like to take another uh, another webinar i don't know uh, so later, let's say, to answer all the questions that came from our attendants because we were in uh, short time today and we couldn't cover all, all uh, the requests came from uh, the attendants that they have interested in. Thank you everyone for your question. I will take an action. I don't know if you can contact with me. I'm ready to answer for everything. And take, thanks for organizers and thanks to my colleagues that uh, we had a uh, very interesting and valuable webinar today. Thank you very much at all. Um, the first lady in the house, that is uh, Maha. Um, thank you very much. So it has been a pleasure being on this webinar. I think something we forgot to talk about when it comes to platform, which is very important as well, is customer service. Players should be able to easily have access to a resolution to customer service frequently asked questions on the platform and um, it should also tailor to the specific needs of that market as well localized um, making it localized as well having local customer service who can interact with, with these people in their local languages to make it easy for resolution this can also help with customer retention too because when it's easy for them to um get resolution to their issues or problems it can make it a unique selling point for you because when they feel like if i have an issue i can easily get a result with this platform so they stick to that platform so that can also be a good way to retain customers and um, serve uh, the, the players better too so it has been a pleasure being on this webinar thank you for having me here i game in africa and the sponsors for this webinar Awesome, awesome. I think very last solid point from the first lady in the house today. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Thank you very much, Hella Beta, our sponsor. My name is Ayafemi, and I think you can connect with every speaker here on LinkedIn, right? You find um, our information on my Game in Africa page on LinkedIn. If you have any specific questions or you want to just, you know, connect with any of us, feel free to do so. Thank you very much, guys, and see you on the next one. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Have a good one. Yeah. Cheers.